Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here, and welcome to the very first part of my Vice City playthrough. This is my favorite classic GTA. I played Vice City almost three years ago. Um, I played it for 200 when I got to 200,000 subscribers, and it's been a few years, two and a half years since I've played Vice City, so I'm going to be doing it again, this time with a webcam, and we're also going to be wearing our costumes. So right here, I have Tommy, kind of Tommy Versetti shirt, shirt. I tried to find a shirt that matched his to the best of my ability. I also have two more um, Tommy Versetti outfits that I'm going to be wearing during this playthrough. So we're going to have a lot of fun with this. I recently completed Vice City stories, and I thought that I would follow up with Vice City. I know I said that I would have Vice City up Saturday, but, you know, I had some free time today. I woke up kind of early, and so I thought, you know, I'd, I'll start Vice City today. And so I'll have the first part up right now. So here we go. Let's do it. Vice City. This is my favorite classic um, uh, GTA. And it's also my first um, uh, GTA. I played this when it first came out in 2002. I was eight years old. The nostalgia is really kicking in. I remember this. So nostalgic. 2002, wow. Kind of crazy that I'm playing this game 19 years later. the Vice City theme song. Now for people that, um, that watch me play Vice City stories and, um, are a bit unfamiliar, Vice City stories takes place in 1984. This game takes place in 1986, two years later. And for people who don't know, um, Vice City is Miami in the 1980s. That's the city it's based on. And even the loading screen is just nostalgic. I just remember loading this game up on my PS2 when I was a kid, playing this game after school. That's Sonny Forelli, first one was Ken Rosenberg. Avery Carrington. And I'm also working on um, a bunch of Vice City stories and Vice City lore videos that are coming out. And that's Phil Cassidy right there. Uh, Big Mitch Baker. I can name all of these characters just based on their artwork. Marcos Bistro, Liberty City 1986. This is the same place where Claude kills... Um
Ferelli family. This is the that's the Ferellis. Tommy was a for, is um a soldier in the Ferelli family. He spent 15 years in prison. He got arrested in 1971. I'm gonna talk about that a little later. What happened? Hey, hey, guys! It's uh, Ken Rosenberg here. Hey, hey, great. Hey, well, uh, I'm gonna drive you guys to the meet. Okay. Now, I've talked to the suppliers, and they are very uh, keen to start a business relationship. So, uh, if all goes well, we should uh, be doing very nicely for ourselves, which is, you know, good. Okay, so, they're brothers, okay? One operates the, uh, the business, and the other one does the fun. Vice City Docks. Now, this cutscene is going to be really important. You guys watch me play Vice City Stories. A lot of you guys are going to be shocked by something right now. This game is so 1980s themed. I know it's 1986, okay, but it's... Okay, that's them in the chopper. All right, here's the deal. They want a straight exchange on open ground. All right? It's okay. so 80s themed. I love it. That guy right there with the two briefcases, this is Vic. That's Vic Vance. Two years later. Look at this now. Got it? 100% pure grade A Colombian, my friend. Let me see it. The greens? 10s and 20s. Used. I think we have a deal, my friend. <laughs> oh, shit. Yep. Vic is dead, in case anybody is wondering. A lot of people that... that, that didn't realize that or got about to be shocked in this playthrough. Vic dies in the first five minutes of Vice City. That's right. Not joking on it. That's that's why I was always saying it's really sad what happens to Vic on my Vice City I stories my playthrough. Head out of the gutter for one freaking second and fate shovels shit in my face. Go get some sleep. What are you gonna do? I'll drop by your office tomorrow and we can start sorting this mess out. So we're back in Vice City now. The radio, I think, is going to talk about a hurricane. Come back here, Tobago! A taxi leaving in the distance, a thunderstorm rolls in. It's a metaphor for my haircut or this pledge drive. Yes, the pledge. We interrupt your programming with a message from the State Department. All bridges and Don't some roads in the Vice City metropolitan area have been closed because of a severe weather warning. Meteorologists are tracking Hurricane Hermione, which has devastated five Caribbean islands and is heading for Vice City. More updates soon. So the bridges are closed. Um, uh, hur a hurricane's coming in. And if you guys notice, in, um, in Vice City, you start on the right island, where in Vice City stories, you start on the left island. Walk through the front door of the Ocean View Hotel to enter the building. Now, um, like I said, I don't know much about Miami, um, uh, but, but like some of you guys that watch my channel are from Florida. Um, uh, I think that this is South Beach. Am I right on that? Correct me if I'm wrong. This part of Vice City is supposed to be South Beach, Miami. Funny bunny, honey. Oh, that nostalgic music in the hotel. And also, guys, I'm probably gonna get like five copyright claims on the first part of this uh, video. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep all the music in on the first part. I'm gonna let the video get copyright claim. I'm gonna let the video get demonetized because I'm not gonna let it uh, the stupid copyright claim ruin that nostalgic feeling. Oh, this cutscene now. Tommy! Tommy, it's been too long. I know, I know, you're just overwhelmed with emotion. Fifteen years. Seems like only yesterday. I guess that's a perspective thing. Hey, doing time for the family is no piece of cake, but the family looks after its own, okay? So how'd the deal go down? You sitting on some white gold? Look, Sonny, we were set up. The deal was an ambush. Harry and Lee are dead. You better be kidding me, Tommy! Tell me you still got the money. No, Sonny. I don't have the money. That was my money, Tommy! My money! 
You better not be screwing me, Tommy, because you know I'm not a man to be screwed with. Wait, Sonny. You have my personal assurance that I'm going to get you your money back, and the drugs, and I'm going to mail you the dicks of those responsible. Hey, I already know that. You're not a fool, Tommy, but I warn you, neither am I. If it was anybody else, you'd be dead already. But because it's you, because we got history, I'm going to let you have this. Look, Sonny, you got my word. I'll be in touch. Rest in peace, phone. So the deal was an ambush, and um, uh, Vic had nothing to do with that ambush. Um, uh, that was somebody else um, uh, that did that, and we're, you're gonna find out who did that, and I'm gonna explain who did it later on. Good. I have a yeah. video coming out on Vic Vance also, and like what happened to him after Vice City, and like what led him to that deal. It's gonna be coming up, so just be patient with me, guys. But yes, for people that are gonna ask me a bunch of times, is Vic really dead? Yes, Vic is dead. When, when um, Vice City Stories first came out, a lot of people kept saying that, that was Pete Vance, which is um, uh, Vic and uh, Lance's other brother, um, but Rockstar eventually confirmed that, that was Vic. Now, why is his accent so much different um, uh, in Vice City? It's because the, the character of Vic Vance wasn't really fought about un until a few years later when they released Vice City Stories, which was a prequel, and so they decided to expand on that character, and so they got a different voice actor for him. So if they ever do a remake of Vice City, please, you know... Um, Bring back the original voice actor for Vic Vance, I'm trying to remember the guy's name, and just have him record that, that those same lines. Um, and maybe, you know, make um, update his face to make him look a little bit like he did in 1984 also. But that was Vic Vance that died at the beginning there. It's kind of messed up um, when you're playing Vice City Stories and you know what Vic's fate is eventually. Go get some sleep, he says. <laughs> I have been sitting in this chair all night with the lights off drinking coffee. This is a disaster. We are so screwed, man. These gorillas, listen to me, are gonna come down here and rip my head off. It's re ridiculous. I did not go to law school for this. Okay, now what the hell are we gonna do? Shut up, sit down, relax. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. You're gonna find out who took our cocaine, and then we're gonna kill them. That's a good idea. That's a great idea. Let me think, let me think, let me think. Oh. There's this retired colonel, Colonel Juan Garcia Cortez. He's the one that helped me set up this deal well away from Vice City's established thugs, okay? Now listen, he's holding his party out in the bay on his expensive yacht, and all of Vice City's big players are gonna be there, okay? I have an invite, of course I have an invite, but there's no way that I'm going out there sticking my head out the door, no I way, I told you, happen. shut up, I'll go myself. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, I like 1978 too, but you know, this isn't gonna be a beer and strip. This is. I mean, no offense, but I think that you might turn heads on the runway for the wrong reason. What's wrong with the way I'm dressed? Okay, look, here. Stop by Raphael's. Tell him I sent you. He'll make you look respectable. Okay, go. Come on. Now, Tommy's like a dialogue at, like after the in between the mission cutscene. Huh. Now I gotta dress like a chump as well as hang out with them? I like this shirt. <laughs> And um, one final thing here about Vic Vance, um, uh, I wanted to say, um, Vic's death, um, uh, Vic died before Vice City Stories came out. Um, uh, so uh, they didn't just plan that, um, uh, they didn't plan his death um, well in advance. He was already dead in Vice City when they first made up the character. But um, Johnny, how he died in GTA V from The Lost and Damned, that was stupid. And um, uh, that's, Vic's death makes more sense, and I'll explain why. Johnny's death makes no sense. And I have that video eventually coming out on Johnny. You know, I'm sorry it's been delayed, but I do promise it will be up. I'll talk about how Rockstar ruined Johnny. Um, but anyways... Let's, um, let's put on Tommy's suit here. Put the piss off her. Hmm, nice bike. So I tried my best to recreate Tommy's blue suit. This, I got this suit on here. Um, let me know if you guys think this suit matches that I, um, uh, that I chose for this playthrough. I think that this, um, uh, this matches to the best. Um, uh, this, the, Tommy's suit is a little bit more lighter blue, but I was trying to find the right color, and so I think this is the closest that I could find to his suit. I even got the black shirt and the, um, uh, the gold chain as well, so if you're new to my playthroughs, I tend to dress up as the characters in the games that I play. Now here we go, this is one of my favorite cutscenes in the game, the party.
Buenas noches. I understand you are here on the behalf of Mr. Rosenberg. I hope any recent problems have not affected his health or uh, mental well-being, Mr. Versetti. He's just got a touch of agoraphobia. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And you? I just want my merchandise. Ah, it's an unfortunate set of circumstances for all involved. Of course, I have initiated my own lines of inquiry, but such a delicate matter will take time. Perhaps we'll talk later. Meanwhile, let me introduce you to my daughter. So this is Colonel um, Juan Cortez. Remember the guy that uh, Gonzalez mentions a lot in Vice City Stories? That's him. Of course, Daddy. Please, excuse me. Mercedes? You try living with it. Anyway, let me point out some of our this more This is such a great cutscene. That's our Congressman Alex Shrub with rising silicone star, Candy Sucks. And have you met my lovely wife, Laura? No? Well, uh, unfortunately, she's in Alabama. This is Candy. And Scumbag cheating there, politician. We have the Vice City Mama That's Donald star Love. Titan. Young Donald he Love in the middle. Always the charmer. I blocked down on him, and then I put him in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. Well, now, I'm looking at some prime... And list. that poolside amphibian is Jez Torrent, lead singer with... Love fest. Yeah, can I tell you? Do you know how they play ping pong? It's silent. Let me tell you. It does not involve a battle, if you know what. Impotent. And the chatty trio, that sleeping sweat gland is Papa's right hand gimp, Gonzalez. And the other two are Pastor Richards and pseudo intellectual film director Steve Scott. That's Gonzalez right there. The giant shark comes in and just bites their dicks And look off. who we have here, Diaz. You never saw anything like that before. Colonel, your party's a devil, a triumph. <laughs> I can only apologize. Well, oh, then other amigo. How do we find you? <laughs> Our business is very trying. Barbarians at the gate. A time for rewarding one's friends and liquidating one's enemies, amigo. Who's the loudmouth? Ricardo Diaz. He's Mr. Coke. Mercedes! Oh, I was just taking my friend back into town. Another time, Ricardo. Ricardo, let's go Let's over get there. out of here. Sure Actually, take there. me to the proposition. Drinks. Man, I wish I could play B Rock. Maybe. Do you mind me resting my hand in your lap? Maybe. <laughs> so difficult having a rich and powerful father. Vamos. There's Lance's house right there. Lance's house actually doesn't make any significant appearances in the story in this game. It's only in Vice City stories. See you around, handsome. I'm sure you will. So, um, a few other things I wanted to say. Um, uh, Mercedes, who's um, uh, the Colonel's daughter, she was actually supposed to play a larger role in this game. She does have a few more appearances later in the story, but she actually does. Uh, she was originally supposed to play a larger, um, a larger role in the story. She was actually supposed to be the first GTA girlfriend, so Mercedes was actually going to be the first girlfriend in the GTA game. But for some reason, I don't know why, Rockstar took that out. So there was going to be some extra missions with her, apparently, and she was going to call up Tommy and get really angry at him, and I think eventually break up with him. But um, uh, I don't know why they didn't um, uh, add that in. They took that, Rockstar took that out for some reason, and then San Andreas brought, um, I had the first girlfriend in it. Back alley brawl. Ah, well, I hope you're having a good time, because I'm going out of my mind with worry here. What did you find out? That there are more criminals in this town than in prison. We need a lead from the streets. Okay, let me think, let me think, let me think. Ah, I got it. Okay, there's this slimy, some music industry slime ball. Goes by the name of Kent Paul. Anyway, he's got his nose so far up most of Vice City's ass that if anybody knows the whereabouts of 20 keys of coke, it's this guy, all right? He's always at the Malibu. I'll go pay him a visit. Take it easy now. So, um, uh, Ken Rosenberg is a major character in this game. He's a much larger character than in San Andreas. San Andreas, he did play a big role, but this one, he plays a major role. He's, like, um, the second or third most important character in this game. Um, and, uh, you're gonna find out why Ken Rosenberg ends up in San Andreas eventually. Um, uh, that's explained in the intro in San Andreas, but I'll, I'll explain it, um, uh, one day. I'll make a video about Ken Rosenberg. And, um, I know I, you know, I'm talking a lot about these lore videos, 
but do, do be please be patient with me guys because the lore videos do take a lot of time to make but i all these lore videos that i've said i will make them i'll re i will release them over time it just takes a little bit of time for me to make some of them because they require a lot of editing commentary and research into the characters um okay now this club right here because vice city was based almost entirely on scarface and miami vice um uh this the malibu club this is based on the babylon club uh and also let me turn on um here uh let's see here uh Subtitles. I don't have those on here. Here we're gonna meet another important character that also appears in San Andreas. Kent Paul. Where did you pop up from? I've been looking for a bird like you for ages, mate. You know what? I'm looking am? for some English guy. Kent Paul. Kent Paul, mate. Yeah, I'm the governor, Andy. I'll sort things out. You know what I mean? I'll treat you. Whatever you want, I'll get you, girl. Don't you worry about a thing, mate. Get lost, honey. Oi, 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 oi. You Ken Paul? I'm a friend of Rosenberg's. Rosenberg? Rosenberg? Oh, that bonkers ambulance chaser! That guy could defend an innocent man all the way to death row. <laughs> Get another drink, bruv. Everybody's a comedian. Listen to me. I'm missing 20 keys and a lot of cash. Drugs, mate? It's a mugs game. What do you know about it? Oi, oi, well, what I was coming to was, there's some chef come trumpet shifter who deals at kitchen of Hotel and Ocean Drive. He's been looking real pleased with himself lately. You could go and check him out. I will. And I'll be seeing you around. Yeah, that's right. Go and walk away, you mug. I knock you spark out. Give me a drink. And where's so, that slut? Kent Paul basically gives you information in this game. He knows everything that's going on in Vice City, all the rumors and stuff like that. And so... Now, um, uh, we're about to get some, um, uh, payback for Vic Vance right now. Here. Go and find the chef on Ocean Drive. This guy here, Leo Teal, is his name. Hey, what you looking at? You better start talking. Hey, make me, you prick. Okay. Come on! Now, Vice City doesn't have a lock-on system for um hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat. Now, this guy, this is the guy that shot Vic dead um, at the beginning of the game. You know, one of the guys who shoots Vic, that's him right there, Leo Teal, um, uh, one of the hitmen. Let's take his phone. Cell phone acquired. Oh, way to go, tough guy. Beat him to a pulp. That Lance. should make him real chatty. You want some too? Hey, chill. I want what you want, brother. Oh, yeah? And what's that? Your green and my dead brother's white lady. Unfortunately, you just silenced our lead. Accidents happen. Get lost. Hey, hey, whoa. Well, no need to go all long range on my ass. The way I see it, we two hombres in a strange town. We need to watch each other's back. My back's just fine, brother. You sure about that? Here, take this. Follow me. This way! You gotta stay away from guys like me. It was only gonna end like this! We kill all of these guys here. Now, all of these chefs right here, these three other chefs are probably the other hitmen that were, um, that were at the, um... That were at the deal, um, now um, or hired guns, I should say. Um, uh, Leo w was their leader, the guy that um, uh, that Tommy killed. Now, why are hitmen um, uh, uh, chefs? Uh, I'll explain that in a moment. One thing you gotta realize about this town: we gotta pack some heat. The local gun shop is a couple of blocks away. Now, the reason that the hitmen are chefs is because um, uh, hitmen need a, a, a legitimate job in real life. Because for tax reasons, when the government asks them where are they getting their money from, they disguise it as some other job. That, oh, I'm a chef at some fancy restaurant or whatever. When in reality, the majority of their money comes from the hits and assassinations that they do. So that's the thing, is a lot of criminals will actually have legitimate jobs that they'll have just for tax reasons. So that's why um, Leo was a chef. Stand in the pink meter, um, okay, to go into the store here. 
Now, the gun store, ammunition is a little bit different in Vice City than in Vice City stories. In Vice City stories, you had to, like, load into the building, but in Vice City, you can just walk right in. Look at that Rockstar jacket on the, um, uh, gun store owner. But, um, so, we, we haven't, uh, fully avenged Vic Vance yet, um, because the people that we killed in that alley, those were the people that were hired to ambush the deal. The, um, uh, the, the person who planned it out is still at large. So the person who ordered that, um, uh, that ambush is still at large. I'm gonna explain later on who it was that did it. I'm gonna go see what I can dig up. I'll be watching you, Tommy. Oh, we got a call? Hey, uh, Leo, I think we got a buyer for Diaz's merchandise. You gotta give him a ring, man. Set up the deal, you know? Where are you now? You okay, Leo? Sound kind of different. Just tell me where you are. Who the hell is this? Put Leo on, man. Leo's gone away for a while. He left me in charge. Hey, Screw man. you, man. So that right there, uh, they're talking about the merchandise that was stolen. Now, who who did they mention right there? Who's merchandise? What who, what did they say? Whose name? Right there. And we're gonna we're gonna find more evidence on that a little bit later. Jury Fury. Oh, this is... <laughs> oh, oh, for God's sake, it's you! Oh, jeez! I'm gonna need new pants! Hey, those psychos from up north, they've been on the horn, and they're coming down here soon! Now, where is the goddamn money?! Relax, relax. We're not at that part oh, yet. Oh, I thought that you were taking care of this! I really did! And now those guidos say we gotta do them a favor! You mean I gotta do them a favor? Oh, of course that's what I mean. Do I look like I can intimidate a jury? I couldn't intimidate a child, and believe me, I've tried. Now look, it's either that or Ferelli's cousin Giorgio gets five years for fraud. You gotta take these guys out! I understand. Help the jury change their minds. Don't worry about no, it. No, 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 no! I tried that! The jury case didn't go so well. So make them change their minds. All right, more crap to wipe up. What did I do wrong in a past life? Huh. <laughs> Now this cutscene is going to be kind of funny here. <laughs> Stupid NPC drivers, right? That hammer would be useful. Some Florida moron. So Florida is mentioned several times Not in um uh Florida is mentioned several times in this game. Now um Now the thing about that is um Florida is mentioned, um, uh, it, it's the state where Vice City is. The state where, um, uh, Liberty City, New York is, is Liberty State. Um, uh, the state where, um, Los Santos, San Fierro is, is San Andreas. Um, but uh, Las Venturas will be in Nevada. I'm not sure what Nevada is called in, um, uh, in, uh, in the GTA world, though. I think it might also be called San Andreas, but... Look at this fail now. <laughs> now, what's going on right here is, um... Rem remember, Tommy is a soldier in the Ferelli family. Um, that's a made man of the Mafia, and he was, um, uh, he was in prison for hey, man, 15 years. He just got out recently. And these guys that Tommy is threatening, these guys are jury members. Um, they are jury members for, um, uh, for Giorgio Ferelli's oh, trial. Man, I still got payments to make on this! Oh, man. Giorgio sends his regards. <laughs> okay, that's one juror scared. Man, this also happens in Ace Attorney, where the jurors are, like, um, corrupted. <laughs> I'm playing that also right now. Um... Let's see, let's get, oh. Gotta sprint with Tommy here. But basically what's going on is Giorgio, apparently Giorgio committed some kind of fraud in Vice City. It was kind of strange considering that he's um, a Liberty City gangster. But um, Giorgio is on trial in Vice City. 
um, uh, and he's on trial for fraud, and he can he can get sentenced up to five years in prison. And so basically, um, Tommy is now threatening the jury so that they basically declare him not guilty, and he doesn't get sentenced to prison. Now the thing about this is, um, this this guy Giorgio Forelli, you guys remember him? He makes a significant appearance in Vice City stories. In Vice City stories, remember when remember when Vic Vance is protecting Phil Collins from the Forellis? That is Giorgio who sent all those guys. Now, Giorgio doesn't make an actual appearance, but he's mentioned several times. He's either um, a capo regime, which is a captain in the Forelli Mafia, or he could be a consigliere, which is an advisor to the Don. But he's a very high rank in the Mafia, considering that he has like a lot of like um, uh, just that much guys. Smash up the Juris car. Okay. And now, um, here's the thing is, um, people are probably wondering, how does Tommy know where the jurors are? Jurors are supposed to be kept confidential. The reason, it's simple, it's corruption. That's how they, that's how Ken Rosenberg found out where the jurors are and told Tommy about it, because Ken Rosenberg probably bribed somebody in the government, in the, in the courts, to tell him exactly who the, um, uh, who the jurors were. Um, so this is 1986. Corruption was much more common in 1986. Corruption still happens. But it was much worse back then. I can't believe this is happening. Innocent until I say otherwise. Innocent until I say otherwise. Ah! Now here's um uh, here's the thing is um uh this this is actually re uh, somewhat realistic. The mafia has actually done this before. They actually find out who jurors are on trial, and they will scare them. Um, uh, this has happened before. Um, this was especially notorious during Al Capone's reign. Hey, Tommy, it's Sonny. How's the suntan? I ain't got no suntan. We well, ain't got my money either, so I'm one of them myself. What are you doing? So tell me, Tommy, what are you doing? I'm looking for the money, Sonny. Don't worry. I am worrying, Tommy. That's my style, because I seem to have this problem in my life with unreliable people. Don't be an unreliable person, Tommy, please. Do us both a favor. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. So Study still wants his money. Um, uh, we're going to be looking for that ex and find out exactly who took it and where it is. Um, so I guess we'll leave off here, but I was going to say that the Mafia, when they would find jurors, typically they wouldn't do something like that, like, you know, just smashing their car up right in front of them. Typically, they would, the Mafia would prefer to pay jurors off because, oh, there's another phone call. Get to the payphone next to the mall in Washington. Okay, we'll we'll do those missions um um eventually hitmen missions also. But so I was saying is the mafia would prefer to pay off jurors instead of threatening them and destroying their property or doing something like that because when they do something like that it gets it gets more messy and there's a bigger risk of police intervention. When they just simply show up to a juror's house, give them a suitcase full of money and say here not guilty, a lot of jurors are just going to take the money and they don't have to worry about it anymore. Um but if they don't want to cooperate, if they're uh, honest, then they're going to scare them. Um, uh, so that's t that's typically what's going to happen at that point. But um, I guess uh, we'll leave it off here. So thank you guys for watching. Again, this is my favorite classic 3D GTA. The reason I like this one a little bit more than Vice City Stories is because in this one, you focus on like the businesses, where in Vice City Stories, there's like kind of like the illegal businesses. But in this one, like you're buying like clubs and like print works and taxi businesses and stuff like that. That's why I, I really like this one. Um, uh, so thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone.